that has been on my mind lately is how much of one's life is a result of their past karma are the injustices and unfairnesses that one faces in one's life a result of their past karma if so do you accept these injustices on and find solace in the fact that okay the karma is being cleared <laughs> 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 even though it might seem detrimental to our lives in so many ways uh, samantha you are old enough for this i'm not saying you're old i said you're old enough <laughs> Uh, that, do you still expect the world to be fair to you? That's why I'm asking this question. <laughs> <laughs> the, that is Can the, I blame it on my past karma is what I'm asking. <laughs> were you, I want the world to be fair to me is a schoolgirl question. <laughs> By now you should know the world is not fair. It will not be fair to you. But. If you dig deep into yourself and have a taste of life, not a taste of your thought and emotion, the taste of life that you are, then you will see life is not just fair, it's just fantastic. <laughs> so do you want fair life or fantastic life? You must decide. I've noticed this, that beyond the material ego, there is now suddenly a widespread... Who's this ego guy, your friend? <laughs> it's all around me <laughs> <laughs> And in my industry, the heights of it <laughs> So beyond the material ego, I've noticed there's, com there's now widespread spiritual ego. I've come across a lot of people who are now on a spiritual path. <laughs> Not you, Sadhguru. <laughs> who, who, who consider themselves superior to people who are not on a spiritual path. How would you advise such people to ensure that they don't fall a prey to this new spiritual ego? <laughs> we'll… Uh, first we'll address this ego guy, okay? If you show me where it is, I'll fix it right now. I wish I knew where it was, it just keeps coming suddenly. So, you don't know where it is. <laughs> the thing is just this, say at certain moments, as a person, as a woman, you are a beautiful person, wonderful person, I mean. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't say only at certain times you're beautiful, you're always beautiful, but certain times you're wonderful, <laughs> all right? Certain moments, maybe you're nasty, possible. So whenever you're nasty, you say, it's my ego. Why don't you say, it's me, I'm sometimes wonderful, sometimes nasty. If you see this, naturally nastiness will go down. But if you say, whenever you're nasty, Mr. Ego does this, and you don't know where he is, you don't know his address or ID, nor do you know his phone number, <laughs> so how do you fix this guy? So everybody has this going in their life because uh, this is uh, spiritual jargon without being spiritual is all over the place, particularly in India because we have, uh, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand years of spiritual history. So we know all the words, we know what atma, paramatma, this one, that one, ankara, everything we know, words only. Words only, <laughs> noted <laughs> So we can just throw words like this and confuse the Western population quite a bit. <laughs> because if you come here, they'll say mukti, shakti, this one, that one, all kinds of things. They'll… they'll think… I know a lot of people who've gone and set up spiritual centers in the West, particularly in America, because they just know one chant, just one chant. <laughs> okay, asatoma, sadgamaya, with this they run the whole thing <laughs> So, <laughs> so unfortunately, spirituality, uh, in some ex in some ways, it's come there. It's come there because there is need in the society. There is not enough source. Because of that, people are manufacturing this here and there. I must tell you this. Is it okay if I take a few minutes?
<laughs> this happened, uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, fifteen, twelve, fifteen, sixteen years ago. And uh, I was in the United States and then uh, somebody in the office, our office told me, Sadhguru, did you know every day hundred thousand people are typing out the word spiritual? I said, is that so? Type it out and see what comes out. Are we even there in the picture? <laughs> they typed out spirituality. First thing that comes up is a spa in Mexico. You've been there. <laughs> and the next thing that comes out is a call girl in Northern California. She has learned uh, all that SEO. For everything she says spiritual, 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 hundred and eight times she uses the wor word spiritual on her website. You say spiritual, she comes up, number two. I thought this is a shame. For thousands of years, anything spiritual means people looked east. East means India, that's what it meant. So I said we must start something, uh, a spiritual gateway. That if people say, if they seek spirituality, they must look towards India. Because this is one culture which has spent maximum amount of time. <laughs> maximum amount of time exploring human consciousness and the mechanics of what a human being is, how this functions on the surface and its very core. How does this function? What can we do about it? This has been explored. I am not saying this out of my Indian origin. I am saying this after looking at the world closely, that nowhere else has it been looked at like this. So, I said uh, we must start a spiritual gateway, India, the spiritual gateway. As a part of this, uh, I thought, till then I must tell you this, Till about fifteen years ago, I had not met a single guru in this country. I, I just did not meet, I was just busy doing my own work. I never thought I had to go and look for somebody, I had never been to any other ashram anywhere. And uh, then I thought, okay, let me make an attempt, then I started making phone calls. Uh, they all received my call pretty well and then I started visiting some people and started putting together. We had one meeting with one hundred and twenty-five gurus. We made this uh, thing that nobody talks about their philosophy. You keep your philosophy, this is just a meeting. This is just about how to enhance your ashram or your yoga center, whatever you have, how to enhance the quality. We will teach you management, we will teach you branding, we will teach you how to make a website, we will teach you how to present yourself to in the international community. Your philosophy, we don't, we don't touch, you don't touch mine, I don't touch yours, you do your own thing. Because that is the beauty of this culture, that it can exist in hundreds of forms, thousands of forms, and it's okay with us. So when I went about doing this, well, I met many wonderful people, but at the same time, at least sixty to sixty-five percent, I… it hurts me to say this, I found that if I walk into an airport or a golf course, I meet better men than in the so-called spiritual centers because it's full of jargon, no heart, no depth, no profoundness, simply one one chant, one one nonsense, one philosophy that they read somewhere, it's going on like this, this needs to change. So to bring this profoundness to people, as people get closer to me, I get harder and harder and harder. Those who are very close to me, I am bloody cruel. <laughs> yes, because just to bring integrity into spirituality is so hard. Because the moment they get spiritual, little, like you said, you're calling it spiritual ego, I call it spiritual airs. They get spiritual airs, air bubbles get in their head. Suddenly they start acting funny, they start seeing things that don't exist, they start talking about nonsense that nobody understands. If you speak something, whatever nonsense you speak, people in front of you must understand, otherwise why the hell are you speaking? Because the purpose of speech is to make somebody understand what you're saying. No, if I say something that you don't understand, I become big, you become small. This is rubbish. This is going on for too long. 
So everybody quotes a book, every... it all looks like, you know, we are right now talking about earth buddies, we are creating an earthworm image, we are trying to create an NFT. We've over forty thousand images we have created, we will release it shortly. We'll give... gift you one earth... earthworm, okay? <laughs> now, these are all bookworms who fell out of a book. These bookworms were important when people... there was low literacy in the societies. Only one man in the village could read the book, suddenly he was very valuable. Now everybody can read, what is the point you reading a book to me? Huh? If you have something to say other than the book, you tell me. If you going to read a book, what is the point? When I was in graduation, when I was in the university, I made an agreement with the teachers, I will not come and bother you with my questions. Just give me attendance, I will stay out. Because if you go there, from the first moment you go there, first attendance, that's the only interesting thing. <coughs> And after that, they're just reading some notes and everybody's writing down. Those days fount fountain pens, kara 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 kara, it makes noise. I don't like it. I say, see, if everything is in that book, give it to us, we'll photocopy it and give it back to you. You... I don't have to come, you don't have to come. <laughs> I have... I have many interesting things to do in the town. I don't know about you, but I have many interesting things to do in the town. I don't have to sit here and write down, I can photocopy this. So they didn't want me, so I said, give me attendance. Only once a month I went there to check my attendance, whether they were keeping the deal. I sat in the garden outside, <laughs> okay? Why I am saying this is, when you are also literate, why should somebody read the damn book to you? You read? If they have something to say which no, no book can say, of course, then you must listen. So, this whole spirituality as a thing, unfortunately has fallen on bad times, but slowly it is rising because people's longing is increasing. I must tell you this, forty years ago when I first started the programs, in our engineering programs, in various different forms, eighty-five percent of the people used to come to the programs only for health problems. Only twelve, fifteen percent came to know something. Today, over ninety percent of the people come because they want to know something, experience something. Only eight to ten percent. <laughs> Only eight to ten percent are coming for health issues, which is a significant change in human consciousness. About this ego business, this is one thing we must settle. See, within you, is there only one person or two? I think one. <laughs> you think one? Mm -mm, I'm going to go with one. One. <laughs> that means you're an individual. An individual means, the word individual comes from indivisible. You're not further divisible, that's good. You're an indiv individual. If you are two, then you, you're either schizophrenic or possessed. Psychiatrist or exorcist <laughs> Either a psychiatrist or an exorcist has to come. So this is very important, everybody settle this, that don't talk about atma, paramatma, ego, this one, that one. You are an individual. What kind are you? Are you a wonderful one or a nasty one? Fix the damn thing. So you're saying, Sadhguru, don't give excuses that, you know, this is me and this is my ego and we are two different... No. <laughs> you are one and take responsibility yes. for it. Okay. If you do that, definitely you will eliminate the nastiness to whatever extent possible. <laughs>